I know what you're probably thinking. Uh, Pastor Sheets, you're looking a little younger. <laughs> no, uh, today I come to bring you the message of Christ. I have a question. Are you full or are you fulfilled? Do you have the most money, the biggest house, the nicest car, the most friends, the best grades in your class? Are you full of life? But why is it that when you have all of these things, it's never enough? It's never enough to fulfill you. It's never enough. You always need more and more. Even the richest of us still feel this. Famous basketball player Hakeem Olajuwon says that he was successful. He says, he says this about his life and about his obedience to God. He says, I was successful materially. There was never enough. I was blessed by God, and the only way to give thanks is obedience to him. See, he's a Hall of Fame basketball player, but he still saw that his Hall of Fame career, his millions of dollars, they never fulfilled him. And the only thing that did fulfill him was Christ Jesus. So here we are feeling unfulfilled, but what can fulfill us? There's a story about this in the, in the book of John, where Jesus is walking through Samaria, and to set up the scene, Jesus is walking through Samaria in the, in the dead heat of the day, where he's walking by a water well. Normally, the women of Samaria would go in the morning when it's not very hot, because it's a lot easier to draw water from the well, and it's a lot less work, and they would gather together as more of a social setting, where they would talk about the gossip of the town, and it was basically a who is who in the water well. But Jesus is walking through the dead heat of the day, and he notices a woman there, and he knows her, and by his, by his, by his knowing her, he says that he knows that, he has had, that she has had five or six husbands, many husbands before, and so she's a social reject. That's why she's there in the dead heat of the day, because she does not want to be faced by all the other women in the morning. But he walks up to her, and he says, will you give me a drink? And she says, you are a Jew, I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? And then I'll go into the passage, and he says, if you knew the gift of God, who is, who is asking you for a drink, you would have asked him, and he would have given you living water. She says, sir, you have nothing to draw, draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than the father of Jacob, who would give us the well and drank from it himself, as he did also his sons and livestock? See, what she did not realize is who she was talking to. How many times in our life do we walk through, do we walk through and say, sorry, God, I'm going to put you to the side for now because I want to follow my dreams. I want to follow my dream of becoming the richest or having the best class, getting to the best school. I find myself a lot of times just getting enveloped by going to college, finding the best college, by going to so many different prestigious schools that you don't realize that Jesus is offering you living water. He says to the woman, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will, will come in them a spring of water welling up in eternal life. See, God is just standing there offering you living water of eternal life. But we want the water in the well, so we set him aside. What does that do to us with the first commandment of saying, Thou shalt no other gods before me? We have made a covenant with God that we're going to put him first in everything that we do. But when we thirst for the water of the well, of money, fame, that's what we're doing is we're putting him aside saying, no thanks, I'm going to put money in front of you. So what is the bread of life? What is, this, what is this picture of the bread of life that God has given us? Well, in the, chapter, in the sixth chapter of John, Jesus explains what the bread of life is. He says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. <laughs> Jesus is giving himself up for us because his body and his blood that he shed on the cross is what gives us eternal life and what gives us that fulfillment in life. But what is that fulfillment? And that fulfillment is the overflowing joy that Jesus gives us. My father went to Africa about four years ago and he went down to Tanzania where people walk tens of miles just to get water. They walk, and this water is not even clean water like we can get from our faucet. It's water that's infested with diseases. But on Sunday morning, they walk another 10 miles just to go get, just to go worship the Lord and stay joyful, praising the Lord for hours because they know that, that they are fulfilled only in Him. 
So what do we do as we find this, as we find this, uh, what do we do that inhibits us from finding this joy? In the Isaiah reading, as you just heard, he says, uh, the Isaiah says, why do, you spend, why do you spend money on what is not bread? And why do you labor on what does not satisfy? Why do we constantly get, our, get enthralled with this sort of need to be successful here rather than praising him and, being, and, bringing, him to, and bringing others to his kingdom? He says, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest affair. When we focus our minds on what is rich, that is praising the Lord, we find that we feel fulfilled and we feel this overflowing joy praising God and spreading others. Now, once we find this bread, what do we do with it? Do we keep it, keep it to ourselves, not share it? What are we as Christians if we do not share it? We are the body of Christ, so why can't we share it with others? Here in, our, here in our own community of Chattanooga, we have so many opportunities to share his bread, but we don't because we're laboring on what is not bread. We, we, have, constant, we have constant opportunities of people, people walking as you drive down the street. I work down at the Federal Building for, uh, down on Georgia Avenue, and many of you guys are familiar with Miller Park and Miller Plaza, which is now being destroyed. But when I would walk through there, I'd have to walk through Miller Plaza to go to lunch. And there's just homeless people, there are homeless people sitting there who have not even heard the love of Christ, who don't, who don't know it. But too often do I, do I find myself crossing the street, walking the other side of the street just so that I don't have to interact. Why is it that we can't just share the, share the love of Christ? So when we are sharing the love of Christ, we finally, we, we feel this fulfillment and he says, and God leaves us with this, this covenant. He says, I will leave you an everlasting covenant he says, uh, surely you will summon nations you know not, and nations you do not know will come running to you. Because the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has endowed you with splendor. See, when God, when God uh, makes his covenant with us, we must also make the covenant with him that we're going to spread his, that we're going to spread his, his love and his life. Because when, when we do that, he brings us blessings, and he brings us the joy and the love of Christ. And also, when we, when we are sharing this, we, find, we feel this, this happiness that we, are, that we long for that satisfies us. Because as, as the story goes of John Lennon, and when he was in first grade, his teacher sent him home an assignment that says, and the assignment was, I want to be blank when I grow up. So when they came back the next day, all of his friends said, I want to be an astronaut. I want to be a policeman. I want to, I want to be a superhero. But John Lennon wrote, I want to be happy when I grow up. The teacher pulled him aside and said, you failed. You didn't understand the point, the point of this assignment. And John Lennon says, you didn't understand the point of life. Yeah. So if the point of life is to follow all of our dreams of becoming astronauts and policemen, we too did not understand the point of life. And we find happiness through his body and through his blood. And through this blood that we take in communion, we are given the bread of life, the fulfillment of life. When we share, when we share the, when we share the communion. So I leave you with a challenge this week. Find a way that you can appreciate the bread of life, whether it be in the morning, where you constantly, where you, where you constantly pray to God. Let me focus on you today. Let me focus my eyes on you and not on the things of this world. And find a way you can reach out in your community, whether it be leaving leaving a meal for the homeless people who who starve in our in our community. Or joining a committee in our in our church, we have an, we have an intensive care unit uh, feeding program, and we feed the homeless once a week down at First Baptist. I pro I challenge you that if you that you can, if you share your community, you will finally see this fulfillment that Christ has promised you, and you will be endowed with splendor. Now may the grace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds on Him. Amen. Amen. Amen.